So the title is Approach the Factory of the Future by Boosting Your Productivity. Why did I choose this title? Because we, or I think, that almost every company is still on the way to approach the factory of the future or the smart factory. And um, to come back to Bosch, where we belong to, I think everybody knows Bosch, uh, we are 100% uh, daughter of Bosch. And um, four years ago, I was asked from my boss, do you have, um, or do you want to take the opportunity to take care of the digitalization of our plants within Bosch Rexort? I said, okay, well, I'm more a manufacturer, I know more about uh, optimization processes and so on, so, but I will try it, I will do it. And I said, okay, I need a plan. So um, I really did a long analysis with my colleagues in the plants and uh, we developed um, an IT infrastructure, we developed use cases where to go and really did step by step. So I think I know what it means to work on this topic really from scratch. And during that time we learned a lot we learned a lot about optimization processes, about digitalization, how really to bring this to a manufacturing site, and how to implement this also in the organization. And now uh, we're having the chance to support customers and customers um, to provide services um, for their optimization of their processes and in combination with digitalization. But before I come to my slides, I would like to show you a video. Enjoy. Like a boss, control detect like a boss, phone check like a boss, go find D, like a boss, IOT, 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 so efficient like a boss, that's a mission like a boss, never stress like a boss, AR test like a boss, data cloud like a boss, makes me proud like a boss, together we like a boss, save energy like a boss, IOT. Manufactured like a Bosch, with many innovations for the factory of the future, from Bosch. So, I saw everyone, or almost everyone, smiling this morning. I think this was the first time this morning, <laughs> because I was watching the audience before I had my presentation here. <laughs> so, this was um, a funny movie, just to give you an impression what we are doing in the factory of the future. I mean, we don't have Sean in the production site, but some of our products you have seen. Um, and what we really bring uh, from our experience is um, that we already installed uh, some of our solutions in our plants. Uh, we have, within Bosch, over 270 plants, and uh, we are, yeah, we started working together from um, innovations, really bring them to the manufacturing side, made POCs, testing, and really deriving very good solutions that we can really use as a plug and place into our manufacturing sites, and. Um, these are the, the products uh, we bring from one side, and the other side is really the experience to bring it to life into a manufacturing. And um, our team, uh, the productivity boosters, they're combining these experiences. We are combining the product knowledge, the IT knowledge, 
and the experience of really bringing this to life in the manufacturing side. So we really want to boost uh, productivity. We are bundling IT and the OT world to bring smart solutions to customers. We are not talking only about products. We really want to bring solutions because what we experienced, our customers expect they have a pain point, they have a challenge, and they want somebody to help them. This is what I also expected in my work as I was internal because I had nobody who could really support me. I had only uh, some consultants. They made paper, they went out. So, and then I was standing alone. And I was missing somebody who was really going with me the whole way. Really from the scratch, from the idea, making the concept, and really implement this at the manufacturing. And that's why I sa we said, okay, bundle this and bring this as a service outside to Bosch. And before I go further, um, there you read IT and OT. We experienced um, that it's very difficult sometimes to bring these worlds together. And I would like to hear from you, uh, maybe also one example. Uh, how do you experience this in your company? Do you have troubles? Maybe raise your hand and if somebody wants to break an example, it would be very nice. So did you experience a clash between IT and OT world in your company? Only one? <laughs> I can't believe. <laughs> Okay, now you're, you're ready, you go up. <laughs> yeah, this is the discussion I want to. Do you, is anybody there who wants to give an example? Oh, there, right in the back, or here, front. No, there was one guy in the, in the back over there. <clears throat> Good morning. Thanks for the video. Um, <laughs> yeah, my example uh, um, is uh, um, I want to test something. I want to test it today. I want to have it in an encapsulated environment. I ask my IT colleagues, can I have a server to do it or can I have a VM? And say, say sure, um, in two weeks. So, yeah, that's not how it should, should be done, I think. It should be, when do you want it? Tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, this is um, one example maybe from our experience is, uh, thank you, <laughs> is um, that we had a, a project with a customer and we were all done, okay? We had a concept and he said, oh, uh, cool. The manufacturing guys, we said, okay, please implement it. And then the IT came and said, no, we don't need an extra system because we have everything, yeah? We didn't want to install an extra system. We just wanted to help bring things together uh, in their uh, IT infrastructure. So, but this is what we experienced. So, uh, what from our um, yeah, values are, or what from our um, perspective is very important, um, that you understand the manufacturers, you need to understand the processes, um, how to optimize it, and really start also with the lean thinking. Because um, I say digitalization, is nothing without productivity, and productivity is nothing without digitalization. Because I think the last years, uh, we all implemented a lot. We all say we need data. We need a lot of data. We need clouds. We need really cool IT tools. But I think the question is really, what are we doing with the data? What are the right datas? And is it really worth to digitalize? And there, I think, um, the last years, some companies and also we internally sometimes did not do the right question mark. So um, I think it's very important to bundle these competences, to have an idea also to implement IT in the shop floor, in the edge, and to bring this also in this existing IT infrastructure. So um, we support our external customers uh, with our experiences and we also have some use cases, I will go more in detail in, uh, in a minute, uh, to really discover their uh, productivity and really have an add value out of digitalization. And it's really step by step. It's not that we say, okay, we have a big solution and we implement it and then you're fine. It's really a way of doing small steps 
So we say think big, it's good to have a plan where you want to go. We can also support to have a plan, yeah, and then, but start small, start with small projects, because what we also have seen is the people working in the manufacturing side, they're sometimes suspicious. Then you have your workers' council and they say, oh, what are you doing? Um, please, we want to have a POC. And then uh, it's really step-by-step -step evaluating. So there are some um, examples I would like to show you more in detail. One is uh, the overall equipment efficiency. I think it's a very important uh, topic for a lot of companies. And um, in this example, uh, we had a customer that um, had a lack of transparency of the machinery. They didn't have the data of the machine, but the machine data is only one part. Because if you uh, don't know the other deviations that happen uh, during the production, then you don't have the total OEE. And if you don't have the plan data and don't have the actual data, then you also don't have the OEE. So you have to bring the worlds together. Um, you have to uh, really get all the deviations from the, um, from the production side. So in this case, um, they had deviations of the measurements of 30%. And then uh, we connected the machines. We uh, made a way, an easy way, for the uh, workers to capture their deviations that they really had uh, um, yeah, fun to do this, to capture the deviations. F former times when you have paper and things, they just write it down, or maybe oh, I don't have time, or it's too complicated, I don't write it down, because I don't see any benefit. And this was very important, and then I uh, really made a dashboard for it, uh, to see the deviations, to work on the um, Pareto analysis of the deviations, and to get better. So we gained 8% productivity, and um, this transparency was really the first step um, to derive measures to work on it and um, yeah, also to work on the downtimes on a technical perspective. This is uh, another use case. Um, the technology used is RFID. It's something we know over many of years, but still we are confronted with customers that say, okay, uh, we have a lot of paper in production, we need some solutions. And um, this was a topic about um, an order paper that is accompanying the product to the production side. And uh, we have all milestones uh, with an SAP system, for example, and then you have to confirm these. Yeah, but um, sometimes it's very difficult to go in a dashboard on a different system, or you have paper to check mark it. Yeah, so in this way, uh, we installed an RFID solution that they really can uh, do in between the milestones and uh, order confirmation very easily, and we saved a lot of times. So you see, it's uh, 100 hours per month, um, and it was uh, really increasing their productivity. Another topic was mentioned today also, uh, the digital twin and the line connectivity. In a lot of companies, you have heterogeneous machines. We have brownfield, and we are working in a brownfield. So you have different um, steering controls at the machines, and all these machines are connected to different systems because one said, okay, I would like to put a sensor there, I would like to get this data and this and this. It was grown over the years. And then um, you have the, the topic of very several systems connected to a machine. Yeah. And if you want to standardize, it's good to have a machine hub that can really do all these connections. So, um, yeah, we did like, an, uh, you see there, a USB for the shop floor, really to plug and play and then connect um, to all the machines. And um, that you have really one signal of contact and that you have, um, yeah, based on the, um, on the required data, really live data up in the cloud, and also other data that uh, have a pre-processing also later on into the cloud. So um, the result was that we were 35% uh, faster uh, with the integration and the commissioning time and uh, also the configuration and extensibility was uh, really reduced to zero. <laughs> and uh, so you can reduce your um, effort uh, in, 
integrating this with the solution. And what we all want, data and transparency up to the cloud. Another example um, here was um, the topic uh, where we had a um, building of a cluster for a um, SMD assembly UK machine. And um, there we had the, the order coming from the ERP system and um, we had a uh, programming for the, uh, the clustering uh, to make this. Uh, and then uh, there was the question from the customer, okay, um, how can we optimize this? And um, can we get faster? Can we try machine learning? Yeah? And then uh, we established an um, algorithm to, um, yeah, really to test, to try what is the um, outcome if we use this algorithm. And um, this uh, clustering was uh, improved um, in this case here for 28%. Um, so um, it was a high uh, productivity and um, use here um, and um, yeah, regression model, uh, you have feedback and reward. It's a reinforcement algorithm. So it's like um, if you um, can imagine you get chocolate if you do something good and you don't get chocolate if you don't do something good. So this algorithm learns and uh, tries by itself to find the best clustering um, of the assembly. Um, and what the challenge was is um, that you have to recognize or you have to consider a lot of uh, factors around uh, really to find the right clustering. So um, this was a little bit of a challenge, um, but um, the outcome was very, very interesting and very interesting for the customer. So uh, we started to establish the connection to the existing uh, machines that they can replace their old um, clustering system. And one other topic, I mentioned it um, a little bit at the beginning, really to bring this to life from use cases. So this is a hackathon here, this is example. It's not comparable to the hackathon about IT security that you try to break in somewhere. It's a combination of hacking and uh, marathon. Yeah? So um, this method is used um, to bring people together. Um, it's, uh, for example, one week. You go to a, um, we go to a customer and uh, we talk before, okay, what is the problem you want to solve? Um, what is maybe the training needed for your employees? And then we talk, okay, who's the responsible employee who has to work on the machine? Who's the manufacturer? Who's the guy from the IT? And then we say, okay, then we build a team, um, including people from our side, uh, some uh, expert, and then they go to the customer and say, okay, we are working as a group together, as a team together, bring IT manufacturers together and really build up um, solutions together with existing modules that we have, that the customer have. Uh, and in this case, um, they, you look, they are very happy, <laughs> um, so it was successful. <laughs> and they connected the machine um, to uh, where they had problems really to connect. So they connected the lights and they got out the deviations. Um, they had a connection to the shift book uh, over node red. They were able to bring um, the CAM files uh, to the machine they need for, um, for the um, programming in the machine very easily, so they were using existing tools, uh, low-code pro programming, and the power of a team. And one week, and the solution is done, they're ready to go, and the customer is able really to work with the solution. They don't need us anymore, so they can work on their own, they can derive own ideas, because um, this was one topic we also have seen with a lot of customers, that um, they say, okay, um, sometimes I need to train my people, I need to get them ready to use this on their own, and uh, we don't have the whole capacity. So, but this is a way really to bring your uh, employees step by step, um, really to do this on your own, to derive new own ideas. 
So this was about the, some use cases. We have some more topics. And, um, well, I invite you all to visit us in Ulm. Uh, this is our new innovation and customer center. There we also have a model fab where we show some of our products, where we can have a yeah, further discussion, where we can show you what we are doing, go more in detail. So if you like to come to Ulm, you're more than welcome. So uh, take this as an invitation. And um, now I'm ready for questions from your side. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Here's a question. Um, yes, no, the mic. My, OK. So the gentleman has, but you are next. You said that you made it fun for the shop floor staff to, um, to lock the deviations. Um, during downtime, how did you do that? Uh, we looked for a way that they can really, um, really easily catch up their downtimes. Yeah, it was not. It's not always rocket science. Yeah, we had like a, uh, we talked about what were the main deviations, then made a barcode, a scanner, yeah, and connected the scanner to the system. So they had really just scan. Okay, this was the deviation. I don't have to even open a dashboard. I don't have to type anything in. Because what I also know from our workers internally, they always say, oh, I have to open a new dashboard and have to type something, then I'm, I don't want to do this. So you really need easy ways, but it doesn't have to be always rocket science. So, but it helps you in productivity. I mean, that's a goal. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, next. Hi, uh, my name is Mustafa. Uh, I'm from Orlikon. Uh, I have a question. Like You showed a lot of use cases. Uh, I would oh. like to know. It's me. Ah, okay, uh, sorry, I didn't see the mic. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like wondering where you're looking. But okay. uh, so you showed a lot of use cases. Uh, I would like to know what was like the ideal duration when you ideated something with the customer to the point where it was like a conclusive result. You could say, yeah, we improved boosted productivity or decreased the cost. What were like durations for this? And did any of those proof of concepts make it to a product? Um. It's, it's a different time span. If you see the one week of a hackathon, then it's one week. But um, there we're using existing modules and we're trying to connect to the machines or um, to the IT infrastructure of the customer. So there you see very fast the result. And then other uh, topics, um, for example, for uh, the machine hub, that the customer um, has an existing MES system and uh, we are connecting from the machine to this existing MES system. So we will do first uh, the POC, and then um, from this POC, we look that this is a scalable solution that we can transform. Also from the um, first example from the OEE, there was uh, this done for one line, and then it was scalable, this solution. This was done very fast too, and also usable for other four lines. So. Um, we really look, if we are working on solutions that we use existing uh, products, hardware, software, and we are also working together with partners because we say we don't work everything on our own. Yeah, so we have external, within Bosch, a lot of partners and external partners and try to find with existing solutions very fast a solution for the customer. So we want to be fast and really want to bring value. So, but the time span depends on the problem. So. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions? That was gentleman, and then your yes, sir. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, at the beginning, you mentioned that you had like 100 plus projects that you started and POCs. Out of them, how many ended up as real projects and how many failed? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is a difficult question. Uh, I think, honestly speaking, I don't think there were so many that failed. Because <laughs> even if you fail, we say try fast, fail and learn fast. Okay, even if we started a project and it didn't work out right, then we looked for a solution and then it worked out. So I cannot even say that even if it failed for one moment, that it failed 
totally. But I don't know about a project um, that really failed completely, so I, I can't remember, sorry. Thank you. So, yeah, you so thank you very much for the presentation. Um, for me, it would be interesting how you manage to build up after the use case and the project phase the organization to, to, to realize and to sustain these solutions that you created. Mm -hmm. um, we are working like this that uh, when we have um, the first talk with the customer, we say, okay, what are we going to do? We are doing the concept. We are working out how to implement this in his IT infrastructure. And this is what I mentioned before, bring the worlds together. So it is very important also when you start a project that you have the IT departments with you because they have to maintain it, they have to um, be there, also the workers in the manufacturing. Many companies, they really do it centrally. A lot of customers do it centrally. They say, I have an IT department, I derive that my standards and everything is working. But we see that they are sometimes too far away from the manufacturing side. This is our experience. <laughs> so it's always good to have some people in the manufacturing that really are bringing input into the solutions and that are able to take care of it. So um, our idea is really to uh, bring the customer to the stage that he can take care of with his own organization. Mm -hmm. I think this is the important thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is, um, and this is to you and for the presentation. Thank you for our questions as well.